So example two refers to um, an example from the previous notes about the can tapping example. So uh, if you have a can that's shaken up, a can of soda, um, and you start tapping on it, hopefully the longer you tap on it, the less um, amount will just kind of explode out of the can, and you actually have more soda left in the can. So the longer you tap on it, the more soda gets left. And we actually did that um, in previous notes. So example two says, suppose we wandered in during the can tapping experiment and found a partially full can. Without measuring the contents, how could we predict how much soda is left in the can? So you can't measure it, you can't weigh it, you just find this partially full can. What would you predict um, to be the amount left of soda in the can? So if you thought about it long enough, your best guess would probably just be to, to guess the average. So of the 26 cans that were experimented on, what was the average amount of soda left in the can? That would, be, that would honestly be um, your best guess at this point. You don't have any tools, you can't weigh it, you don't have a, a least squares regression line, so of the 26 other cans, what was the mean amount of soda left um, in the can? So without knowing anything else, that would be our best guess. So our best guess here would just be the mean from all the 26 sodas in the experiment. So the mean amount of soda remaining in cans. And so that's, uh, that's our Y variable, that's our response variable, soda. So we can call that Y bar, right? X bar was the mean, so we can call this Y bar for the mean amount of soda left. And I'll go ahead and give that to you, you don't have to calculate this. That's 264.45 milliliters. So right now that's your best guess as to this random can that's got soda in it. So if we only use the mean, y bar, for our guesses, we would expect probably large amounts of error. Okay, that seems reasonable because you're going to have a lot of sodas that were much higher than the mean and a lot that were much lower than the mean. So you get a decent amount of error in your guesses. So this graph actually shows this is y bar, right? This is 264.45. This is a horizontal line. So what if we use that for our line to make predictions? So that's 264.45 milliliters. So this graph is just the scatter plot. It's the scatter plot of the data with the mean y line used for predictions. So if you're going to predict how much soda is left, and if you just guess the mean, that would probably result in a large amount of error. So this isn't the LSRL, this is actually, if you use this line, the mean Y line. And so the squares on there, that's the squared residuals. So I'll show those in pink here. Like, here's a residual to this dot. That's the vertical distance. Like the actual minus predicted. And so the squared residual, I'll just do the square in pink here. That would be the squared residual. And like for this residual here, again, I'll just highlight that one in pink. So the squared residuals are what's shown. Like the actual dots, those would be our data points, like sodas remaining in the can. And the residuals, or the squared residuals, are actually shown here. So in pink here, those are the residuals squared. So the point is this. If you use Y bar for predictions, the sum of the squares, like all those pink squared residuals, if you calculated all of them, which I won't make you do, I'll just go ahead and tell you. How do you calculate the sum of the squared residuals? So for each individual, like y sub i, actual minus predicted, that's what this means. So the actual value for y minus the predicted, then you square it, you do that for each one, and then you add them all up. That's what the sigma means. So that's the sum of the squared residuals. If you did that, you would get 6506 for this problem. Don't worry about calculating it. Like I said, I've already got it for you. So that's what we mean. Like the sum of the squared residuals, 6506, that's what I'm talking about for a large amount of error. Okay, and you should think about like, what do you mean large amount of error? That's large in comparison to what? So those squared residuals are large in comparison to what? Well, in comparison to, instead of using just the basic uh, 
like mean average to make our guesses? What if we actually used our LSRL? So that's the next phase. How much better would our predictions be if we knew how long the can had been tapped? So basically, if we knew how long it had been tapped, we could use our LSRL to make the prediction. So if we knew how long the can had been tapped, at that point, since we already calculated this, it's actually given here also, at that point, we could use our LSRL to make the prediction, which presumably would be a lot more accurate. Okay, but how much more accurate? So the sum of the squared residuals for this line, so using the LSRL, and again, it's the same technique right, for residuals. So those are, those are in pink again. So like for this point, the residuals are that vertical distance. And so the squared residual is already shown. I'm just going to highlight it in pink here. And so for any other point on here, like that's the residual. So you can visualize like the squared residual. So it would be like the area of all these squares. That's what we try to minimize. So in this case, the area or the sum of the squared residuals is only 951.3. So that's much less. And actually all that's given down here also for both of these graphs. So how do we compare these? So we're going to compare the sum of the squared residuals, the ones from the LSRL to the ones from the mean Y line that we just used in a ratio. So 951.3 divided by the one we got from the mean Y line, 6506, which is 0 0.146. Don't worry, I got that calculation for you or 14.6%. Okay, so what is significant about that value? So obviously we know there's much less error using the actual LSRL. Look, I mean the squares are obviously smaller. There's, the sum of these squares would be much less. In fact, we have numbers for that. So 14.6%. Here's the definition of what that means. So this means that only 14.6 of the total possible variation in the amount of soda remaining is still unaccounted for by our LSRL. Okay, so if we got zero for the sum of the squares in the numerator here, like if we did our LSRL and the sum of the squares was zero, that would basically be a perfect line. So we'll, we would have accounted for all the possible variation. But it's not quite zero. It's, it's never really perfect. But it is substantially smaller than if we just guessed the mean. So the mean, that's like all the possible errors you could make or all the possible um, variation that exists. So are we much less than that? Yeah. In fact, in comparison, only 14.6% of um, the mean guesses. Okay, so if 14.6% is still unaccounted for, what's the rest of it? I mean, where's the rest of it go? How does the rest of it become accounted for? Well, we can assume that the remaining variation is due to other things that are uncontrollable, like you know how vigorously the can was shaken. Maybe they didn't have a machine on hand to shake all the cans exactly the same, right? And maybe they, maybe each person taps um, a little bit differently. Some people tap harder than others, so. I mean, there's a couple other uncontrollable factors that create some variation. So that's where that 14.6 comes from. Again, this is not a perfect um, linear fit. Okay, so the point is this, though. 14.6% is still unaccounted for by the LSRL, but that means that the opposite is accounted for. So 1 minus 14.6, which is a pretty high percentage, is actually accounted for by the LSRL. So that's the big takeaway from this. So 1 minus that value, which is 0.854, or 85.4%. So if 14.6% was unaccounted for, 85.4% was actually accounted for by the LSRL. So 85.4% of the variation in the amount of soda remaining is accounted for 
by our LSRL. Okay, to summarize that, the total possible amount of variation, let's go back, that would be like if you guess the mean. Look at how big the squares are. There's a ton of variation if you just guess the average. Okay, and we make an improvement on that to where it's almost perfect, like we minimize these squares. If you use the LSRL, it minimizes the squares quite a bit. Not quite zero, right? There's still some squared error in here, some squared residuals, but it's still pretty good. So we got 951 out of the total of 6506. So that's 14.6% still unaccounted for. But that means that we did a pretty good job going the other way. 1 minus 14.6% gives us 85.4%. And that variation is accounted for by our LSRL. So that's a good thing. Okay, then let's tie this together and see what this really means. So what we just looked at is actually the coefficient of determination, this thing. This first blank here, the standard deviation of the residuals, gives us a numerical estimate of the average size of our prediction errors. That's true. We've already covered that. So there's another numerical quantity that tells us how well the least squares regression line predicts values of the response, the y. So that is our coefficient of determination. And that variable is r squared. Before you ask, yes, it's related to the other r, the correlation coefficient. But anyway, so r squared is actually the proportion of variation in the values of y accounted for by the LSRL on x. And we can calculate r squared. This is actually, um, it's actually exactly what we just did. So the sum of the residuals squared divided by, this is the residuals you get when you guess the mean. So you actually won't have to calculate these by hand. So don't worry about that. Um, typically, r squared will just be given to you. But it's nice so we can just use that example to derive it and kind of see where it comes from. So if you compare the residuals from the LSRL divided by residuals from the mean y line, right? So the sum of the squares divided by the sum of the squares. That ratio gives you this r squared. So that's actually exactly what we just calculated and what we just showed. So what is it? It tells us, and this is the point, it tells us how much better our LSRL is in making predictions. Well, how much better than what? So r squared tells us how much better our line is in making predictions than if we were to just simply guess the mean for all of, the, for all of our predictions. That's the point. That's the comparison we just made. So how much better our LSRL is in making predictions than if we were to just use the mean y value for all of our guesses. So how do you calculate and interpret r squared? Okay, well, the calculations actually should be pretty simple. I mean, other than doing this ratio, um, you can always just square the r value. So whatever the correlation coefficient is, take that and square it. That'll give you r squared, believe it or not. But then the big takeaway and the most important part for the AP exam and for this class is how do you interpret r squared? And I'm going to give you like a cookie cutter approach you can apply in any situation. So the interpretation is the big part here. So if you're asked to interpret r squared, so I always like this in my quote marks here. That's the blank percent blank percent of the variation in the y variable can be accounted for by what? By the linear model, by our, our LSRL. So it can be accounted for by the linear model. Which one? The one that's relating the y variable to the x variable. So all you have to, I mean, this is, you can use this for every single time you have to interpret r squared. This percentage, you replace that with actually the r squared value. 
So blank percent of the variation in the y variable can be accounted for by the linear model that relates the y variable to the x variable. Okay, so how are r squared and r actually related? Well, if you want to solve for r and you're given r squared, you should have to take the square root. But it could be plus or minus. You have to know which one. So which one is it? Well, I mean, that's kind of up to you. Depending on the direction, you just look at, like, is it positive or negative? This is the association. And I'll just, I'll just caution you. Like, that's a careless mistake a lot of people make, the sign on r. Like, if you see a negative association and they gave you r squared, well, whenever you take the square root, make sure you know that r is negative in your answer. Um, and just in general, r squared will always be positive, obviously, because you're squaring a number. And it also has no units. r squared has no units. All right, and then question five here. How is r squared related to s? Well, they're both measurements of how well our line fits the data or how well the LSRL models the data. In other words, like how much scatter there is from the LSRL, like the points around the LSRL. So they're both measurements of how good the line fits the data. Um, S is measured in the same units as the response variable. We know that. And to compare, R squared has no units. So it's like a standard score, R squared is. doesn't have any units. Um, neither, although they both talk about how well uh, the line fits the data, they don't actually address the form. So whether the trend is actually linear or nonlinear or curved, neither one of those address that. So you could have a really strong like R squared value, and the thing's actually not linear. Or a really small standard deviation, the thing's actually not linear. So if you want to address linearity, you need to either look at the scatter plot, notice the trend, or look at the residual plots and see if you see a pattern. Okay, and then I'm going to stop right here Example four, I'm going to leave to you. So when I check to make sure you did these notes, I'm going to check to make sure um, you completed example four. Everything on here we've already done. Uh, the only new piece would be part D. Part D says interpret the value of R squared, and I already gave you the model to use. You just need to replace that with the variables and obviously the correct value for R squared. So you should be able to do it on your own. So that's for you to do. Um, we'll regroup tomorrow and take a look at this problem. But to receive credit for these notes, I'm checking to make sure you did this example. That's all for these. I'll see you in class.